mic. So, thank you guys all for coming, everybody. Very special worship time. Very special. Uh, Mark, why don't you have a seat? Very special uh, day. It's a very monumentous day. We have a. Uh, go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, today is. The day that uh, Marvin has, it's called a Bar Yeshua. And a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, background, there's a Bar Mitzvah in Jewish cultures. So, it breaks my heart. Uh, Lord, I bless your name and I give you this time in Jesus' name. I pray your blood over it. Jesus, may it be a fragrant offering in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, it breaks my heart in this Western culture. It breaks my heart, it breaks God's heart. Uh, if your phones are not on silent, vibrate or off, you can do that, please. Uh, we have children. We have adults who are children. We have 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 year old children. They've never been released. They've never been set free to make mistakes. The grace of God is free because, it, because somebody paid for it and his name is Jesus Christ. He paid for it with his blood. And yet, the biggest problem that we have in, in, in Western culture Eastern cultures, Eastern, just other side of the pond, and some other, some certain religions, they uh, release their children, say you're a responsible adult, or rather, you are entering that journey of being a responsible adult, and you're still in a household. What was the purpose of that? So you can be free to make mistakes free to experience life. So that when they get caught up in video game addiction, you can stop and say, you're not, you are going from a parent, like here, with oversight, now here, as a closer level to say, is that a good use of your time? Is that a good use of God's time? And to be able to more discipleship role rather than a parent, parent child role. We don't do that. And it breaks my heart because you have grown men and women who don't know how to be adults. Who've never had the opportunity to fail. So now they're constantly living as if they're walking on eggshells. And I'm so sorry. All of you adults here, I'm so sorry that you have not been released. Those who have not been released. I release you as men and women of God to fail freely because you can fall into the arms of Jesus. Here's your verse, Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Because now you're walking in the Spirit and you're free to fail. Praise God, we have an opportunity. As soon as we know, okay, we can, we can, God redeems the past, but now what do we do forward? Preventive maintenance, okay? That's what this is. Eastern cultures understand because now from 13 to 18, those teenage years are really, they should be adult years where you're learning to grow so that when you get to 18, boom, you're ready for family, you're ready for, for a career, you're ready for all these things, and your wild oats are basically gone, healed in the context and safety and protection of family. That's what God is supposed to do with us. That's what he does do with us. But we don't do it with our children. But we need to. I pray that you who are watching, especially those online, you'll say, you know what? It's never too late to lay hands and say, I love you, child. I'm sorry I didn't do this before. But I release you. I praise Jesus and I bless you as a man and woman of God. You are released. I am not your helicopter parent. I let you go into the loving arms of Jesus. He's your father now. I was your earthly father. I'm still your earthly father. But now you're in direct responsibility, if, if that's your choice, and being accountable directly to him. 
So this is what we're doing. And there's a, there's, there's a message because when you become an adult, let's face it, you're going to walk into fire. But if you walk and you, if, 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 in the scripture, if you cannot walk with walkers, you will not run with runners. You cannot compete with horses if you cannot compete with men. Let's not, let's set up our children for eternity. It's not just give them a career, teach them the, those are good. Physical exercise is of little benefit in and of itself. It's got some weight to it. But all training in godliness, and that means your work is worship. Your family is worship. Your cleaning of the house is worship. Taking out the trash is worship. Every part of your life, you were made to worship the king of kings. That was the whole point in the garden. So let's start standing up and doing it. Because let's face it, there's a world out there. You've got to walk out there into this fire called earth and real life. They're going to hate you. Why? Because they hated Jesus. They won't like you because they didn't like him. The world couldn't receive him because they hated him. Because he's the light. This is what raising your children for the light, this is what it's about. This is what it's about. Preparing them for eternity. Knowing that what they do here on earth, physically, substantively, they could be a poor man on the street. But let me, let me caution you. If they say, the Lord has called me to do this, you better take their word for it and release them. Because you do not want to stand in the way of God. If he's got something, if he's calling them to live homeless for however many months, years, whatnot, you better support them and say, I'm praying for you. I love you. Tell me what you need. I'll be right there with you. And suffer with them. Because all of hell will be against them. They will feel alone. They will. But if you are joined with them, just as we... Uh, Philippians 3, that I may know him, the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering. I make Christ my aim. 1 Peter 4.13, a partaker of his suffering, so that I may partake in his resurrection. Then you will see what God will do with your child. And you will not be afraid. And you will see, okay, son, okay, daughter, I love you. I'll be praying for you. It will, it will, it will do stuff to your flesh, I guarantee it, parents. It will do stuff to their flesh. But by the same token, that's, now that's your cross. You're carrying the cross together. Let it happen. Because that's clinging to that old rugged cross that I've talked about for the past few months that we still have to do because that is our sanctification. That is our walk of redemption that Jesus walked first so that you may have life and you can experience that resurrection power through the cross, not away from the cross, not just, oh yeah, I see the cross, yeah, it's nice. I'm, no. Through the cross, I'm crucified with Christ, buried with Christ, raised with Christ. You can only experience resurrection when you experience the cross. It's the only way. I'm going to say some words, Marvin. Have some people pray for you, speak some words. Uh, you shared with me that, it, honey, it's been, a, it's, it's been a rough road. You've had to grow up very fast. I mean, it's a rocky road. It's sweet, like ice cream, but... It's also tough. Good call. Can be sticky too. Um, but honey, you've you've experienced things that children your age have not experienced. And most of them will not. The whole thing about virtue is me not being a child anymore. So you don't need to say children, you can say young man. Young man, anything young man. So um, Honey, it's not been easy in walking with you, but it's been good. And I hope, Marvin, that as your earthly father, I can do it now from a perspective. And this is where you can pray for me to be like, Daddy, you gave me to the Lord. I'm his now. Or I can say, you're right. Okay. Then I trust him with you. That uh, we've been on an upward progression. Stumble, but the progression is upward. And uh, I pray it just keeps going upward. Don't ever, like we did that last song, don't ever lose that first love. Let that fire burn in your chest until you burn out for him. So I'm going to say some vows. And I will ask you as the community to hold 
you're you're not just child in the faith, but folks, you got a Christian brother. You will have a Christian brother who is accountable before God, and he's going to be taking this. This is a big deal because he's saying, "I want to be adult and treated like one." And if you see anything of unholiness, hold him accountable to it because he's going to take these vows before God and man. Do you acknowledge yourself to be a sinner in the sight of God, justly deserving this displeasure, and without hope, save in His sovereign mercy? Yes, I do. Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God and Savior of sinners, and do you receive and rest upon Him alone for salvation as He is offered in the gospel? Yes. Do you recognize that Jesus Christ is the author and finisher of our faith, but we must work out our faith with fear and trembling before the Lord in cooperation with the Spirit? Yes. Do you recognize that all truth resides in Jesus Christ, who is truth, and is revealed to us through, through the whole body of His Word, Old Testament and New Testament? And do you commit yourself to study and submit yourself to obey the truth revealed in God's Word? Yes. To the extent of your growing relationship with God the Father and Jesus His Son, do you intend to pursue the support of the saints and intercession for sinners through prayer and humble reliance upon the grace of the Holy Spirit for this endeavor? Yes. Do you resolve to maintain a kingdom-building outlook, choosing the eternal worth of souls over the temporary trappings of material goods and short-lived activities? Yes. Do you submit yourself first to the headship of the Lord Jesus Christ and then to his anointed ones and physical authorities that are guardians of your soul? And do you promise to seek the peace and purity of the body of Messiah as a servant, putting aside your desire, bearing its burdens, and sharing its joys? Yes, sir. Now, folks, you heard these vows in the affirmative. And I'm going to ask you all a question, and you can answer in the affirmative. Do you, as witnesses to the confession of Marvin, Marvin Yosef Telshahar, commit to patiently and lovingly hold him Accountable to the vows herein, made for the purity of his soul and the unity of the body of Christ, do you? Yes. 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 Marvin, let me pray for you. If uh, we could have all the elders just. Whatever you do, don't charge shackle mic, please. Don't charge shackle mic. Just touch the screen. And we won't come back in. I don't want to be charge shackle, whatever. Just be here and like. Father in heaven, we set apart Marvin now as an adult, as a, as a child of yours. I give you control, oh God. He's not my child, but he's yours. Just take care of my boy. God, you've given him dreams and visions. Set him apart, oh God, for your holy use. God, you've given him such marvelous things. God, only those you trust do you give such precious jewels. God, you've shown him yourself. You've shown him things to come. Oh God, you've spoken prophecies and miracles from him. Father, he's yours now. He is my son. I, I will be with him as long as possible. But God, I give him to you. Bless him, oh Lord. Be his father now. Help me just to walk with him in his journey. Bless him, oh Jesus. Take care of him. Fill him with your vision, with your call. Burn in him. Let his hands touch the sick, the crippled, the lame, the Chinese who are begging to be free, those who don't know you, and may he declare victory over the oppressed. May he set free the captive. You have anointed him. The Spirit of the Lord is upon him and has called him to proclaim good news to the captive, sight to the blind, hearing to those who are deaf, and freedom to those who are oppressed and to proclaim in the year, uh, the year of the Lord's favor and vengeance of God against those who act wickedly. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Anybody else want to pray? Thank you that he is willing to surrender his life to you. 
you and I thank you that you don't make it easy for any of us but you say that the way that is easy and broad leads to hell Lord the way that is hard and narrow leads to life Jesus we submit to that in your name Jesus we pray amen are you in the fire or are you warming by the fire waiting the outcome are you in the fire or were warming by the fire, waiting the outcome? Hey, Brother Mike, I need some water. Matthew 26, verse 58, uh, 57. So, a little background on this is Jesus just had his prayer in the garden. Peter makes this bold declaration after Jesus says uh, excuse me, he says, even if everyone runs, runs away because of you I will never run away. Jesus says, I assure you, you'll, before the rooster crows, you'll deny me three times. Even if to die with you, I, I will never deny you. So bold, so sure. Last week, I talked about Gethsemane, the oil press, or uh, Gatshmani. From my understanding, there are eight in, in Garden, uh, thank you, Garden of Gethsemane. There were eight trees, olive trees, still existing today, that stand as a witness to the sorrow of what Jesus experienced. So the, the, the text that God gave, I want you to mull over it. Verse 57. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest where the scribes and elders had convened. Meanwhile, Peter was following him. Catch this. He was following him Side by side? No. Right next to him? No. 
at a distance right to the high priest courtyard. He went in and was sitting with the temple police or temple guards, temple servants, temple officers to see the outcome or rather until the end. So if you go to verse 38, then he said to them, this being Jesus, my soul is swallowed up in sorrow to the point of death. Remain here and stay awake with me. Going a little farther, he fell face down and prayed, my father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And we know the rest of the story where Peter fell asleep. He's, and it says in the scripture, um, in fact, in verse uh, 43, he came again and found him sleeping because they could not keep their eyes open, or rather, because their eyes were weighed down. Or sometimes, uh, some translation said that they were weighed down because of sorrow. Folks, Jesus was in a crucible. Now, a crucible to those, uh, who's, who's ever done any metal working? Any metallurgy, okay? So, a crucible is a piece of pottery that is infused with metal in the pottery and you heat metal so that it melts. Typically like rock, iron ore. Here in Minnesota we got a lot of iron ore or gold or any other metal that comes from the rock. Well, it burns out that which is rock or earthy or humanity. Come on, somebody. All of creation talks of his glory. And it burns up. So now what you're left with is precious metal. Iron, gold, silver, what have you. What does the proverb say? Remove the dross and you will have vessel for use. Okay? So the crucible does that. It is in a very hot fire. I had a privilege of sharing with Esther. I, I wouldn't have shared with, been able to share with anybody. I just don't think about it. The other day, I shared with her what happened with Leanne's passing when when you're when there was a struggle with. Uh, when she was ill. And we sort of knew she was not going to do well, and there was a lot of surrender. I felt like if there was a little object lesson, let's say this is me, a piece of flesh, and I felt like this, and I felt like I was in hell. But I knew where I was. I was in a crucible. When you have the hands of God which are a consuming fire, let's see that. Oh, Hebrews 12, 29, for our God is a consuming fire. He is that crucible. The very thing burned up in you is that which is flesh. Your rights, your human affection. This is not supposed to happen this way, God. I don't want to lose this person. We had so much good times. This isn't right. But I knew where I was. I was held tightly in the hands of my Savior. You're in this crucible. You feel like you're in hell. Well, there's only two, two types of fire. God's fire and hell fire. Choose which one you want to be in. If you want comfort now, you will, be in, you will feel some sort of torment of hell. If you want the difficult things now, when the very issues of your soul... I love the song by Matt Redman, Your Grace Finds Me. There in the darkest night of my soul, your grace found me. Psalm 139. If I make my bed in hell or Sheol or darkness, your hand, you are there. Your hand is there upon me. Your hand is upon me. Jesus was going through the fire that was necessary to burn the humanity out of him. The cross was not, this is going to be controversial, but there are other saints who've, who've attested to this. Calvary was not the final battle. The final battle was Gethsemane. 
He had the emotional torment. That was hell. How many of you have had some sort of accusation, some sort of life altering trauma where physically nothing happened, but either finances got ruined, somebody's gossiping about you, somebody's bad mouthing you, you had some sort of friend leave you, desert you, betray you? What hurts more, getting a cut on your arm or somebody betraying you? What hurts more, somebody calling you a Jezebel to your face or somebody just slapping you and saying, oh, you had a bug on your face? What hurts more? It makes it more real here in this Western, excuse me, in the Eastern cultures where they get physically persecuted. They get shot, tortured. And we think, and, and they know, yes, I'm being persecuted. I mean, they have their own challenges. We don't know enough to say, oh shoot, these emotional issues, that's, that's the fire that's burning up that dross. We want comfort. We want ease. We don't want it uh, hard. We don't want to be, what, swallowed up in sorrow. We don't want that because of what's going to happen. What was the swallowing up of sorrow? What was the effect of that? Jesus said, not my will. Folks, you don't have a will of your own. We're not robots. But so long as you surrender your will to Jesus Christ, he'll use you. If you say, no, Lord, I won't do that, he won't use you. He will not trust you. If you feel like, I felt like I was part of the language possessed, we'll just call it constraining because that's really what it is. If the Holy Spirit fills your temple, yeah, you're possessed by the Holy Spirit. And the evil spirits are just not there. Because God will use a surrendered vessel. Have you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ? If you're not, you're living a, 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 a life without meaning. You're living for yourself, folks. If you're living for yourself, let's call a duck a duck. You got Antichrist on your throne of your heart. 5% Antichrist in your heart means you have Antichrist in your heart. It means you're living for yourself, following God in your own way. You have a God of your own making, that's called idolatry. If you have Jesus Christ on the throne of your heart, you're like, I don't care what happens to me. I'm already dead. I'm crucified with Christ, not I that lives. So you are literally constrained and moved, and in Him we live and move and have our being. Does it not say that in Acts? So when there's a surrendered vessel, when you can say, as Jesus said, not my will, but as you will. He went to the cross. That was the Father's will. It wasn't easy, but he went through it like a sheep led to the slaughter. I slaughtered sheep. They literally go with you. You put them down on the ground, and they don't struggle. They say, not my will, but yours. And they know they're being slaughtered. They know it. But if you're a loving husband, man, they know that what you're doing is right. That's the fire. Now, Jesus is in that crucible, that gutschmanin, that oil press. Remember, the oil in you can only come out through pressing. Let's put it this way. You guys need to learn to cry. You guys need to learn to cry. Cry out and say, Jesus, this hurts me so bad. Because what does the psalm say? You keep all of my tears in your bottle and have kept count of all the tossings in my sleep. I weep my couch with tears? When was the last time you guys wept for the lost? When was the last time you guys wept because it was not your will and you say, I'm surrendering my will to Jesus? When was the last time you surrendered something that you held on to something so close? I don't understand what this person's doing. I'm getting offended at what they're doing. But not my will. I don't want to get in your way. Jesus, this hurts. This hurts me. But I surrender. Sometimes we get offended for other people. We saw that in Ohio. A sweet believer got offended for a family member for a godly thing. And I said, stop. You just got offended for them. That's your cross. Embrace it or suffer and bring it back up again. And they said, I'm a sinner. Repented. And whoo, she got touched by the Holy Spirit. Folks, we get offended for the wrong reasons. And we should never get offended. Love does not take offense. We should weep. 
Amen. Instead of saying, that's not right, you should say, oh, Jesus, that's horrible. Help them. Where's the sorrow? Where's the tears? Earthly sorrow brings forth death. Godly sorrow brings forth life, which leads to repentance. Anguish. He was in anguish. And Peter didn't stay put. Instead, he stood warming himself by the fire with those who were unclean. Those religious people, they weren't following God. They were following a God of their making. So he was standing there warming himself by the fire. I'll show you something about that. Folks, you are saved by the fire. So Peter initially boasted of his commitment to Jesus then couldn't watch and suffer one hour with Jesus. Jesus was in that crucible time where he had a cup to drink that only he could drink. That cup was the cup of sorrow, anguish, deep pain, agony and fury of God's heart. There's so much to say about this. This was the cup of Elijah. Peter ran and warmed himself by the fire with unclean religious ones, those who were of the establishment. He got the fruit of being with bad company. It corrupted his good morals, and he denied, and to, to the point where he really didn't know Jesus. He said it with his own lips. Jesus was in the crucible of fire, being fully prepared to go to the outflow of Gethsemane, which was the cross, which was going forward. The outflow of Peter's decisions, shame, hiding, just like Adam and Eve after the garden. Go to 1 Corinthians 3. Verse 13. Yep. 1 Corinthians 3. Um, go to verse 11. Start at verse 11. For no one can lay any other foundation than what has been laid down. Let me put a warning. That foundation is Jesus Christ. Guys, if it's going to church, if it's, well, I'm a good person, if it's, but I love God. If it's, I, love, I even love Jesus Christ. Are you obeying him? I can't answer that. Are you born of God? Are you loving? Because everyone who's born of God loves God and loves others. And, and he that love is, loveth not is not born of God. Love means you give of yourself and deny yourself and you pour out of yourself until there's nothing left. If anyone builds on that foundation with gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will become obvious. For that day, we'll disclose it because it'll be revealed by fire. The fire will test the quality of each one's work. That's the fire of God, folks. If anyone's work that he has built survives, he'll receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, it'll be lost, but he'll be saved, yet it'll be like an escape through fire. Now, wood, hay, straw. What are you doing here? In here, time and space, in this earth, this time. Who are you living for? What are you living for? What's your purpose? Are you building up righteousness and holiness before the Lord, which is gold? Silver, which is redemption? Precious stones, which is human souls? God forbid you enter eternity without knowing that Somebody was affected for the kingdom because you poured out and said, I want to go with a basket of souls. Yeah. I hope I see every, every one of you there. So now, go to Isaiah 47. Forty-seven. Go to verse three. The Lord gave me this word specifically for this time and space, folks. A fire is coming, whether you like it or not. It's not politics, not COVID, not starvation. It's your own salvation. Who are you living for? What are you living for? You should be living for Jesus Christ, proclaiming the gospel at all times. 
in season and out of season. That Jesus came to live inside us. To overcome hell and death. Here on earth. Your nakedness will be uncovered if you choose not to go into the fire. And your shame will be exposed. I will take vengeance. I will spare no one. The Holy One of Israel is, your, is our Redeemer. Yahweh of hosts is His name. This is in the section of the fall of Babylon. Verse 8. So now hear this, lover of luxury, who sits securely, who says to herself, I exist, there's no one else. I'll never be a widow or know the loss of children. Folks, these two things will happen to you suddenly in one day. Loss of children, widowhood, it will happen to you in their entirety in spite of your many sorceries and the potency of your spells. Folks, your children are the very works you've, you've worked for. Your widowhood or your relations, I'm not talking about physical, that, that may be, God forbid, I hope not, but he's talking about anything you've accomplished for in your flesh is going to go. Your intimacy in the flesh is going to go. Any semblance of relationship that you thought you had with God will go in a day because you thought you were comfortable. He says you'll lose it in a day. Guys, I've seen in the past year scores of people in ministry. It breaks my heart. I'm not going to mention names. That they, they had some horrible scandal. Or, or their death was uncovered in shame. God, help us. May we see that and learn and say, Oh God, please search me. I don't want to lose my... I don't want to get shipwrecked. Sorceries. What are you trying to conjure up? What sort of plan are you trying to conjure up? Would you stop? Would you give the Lord and say, Okay, Lord, take my plans. Forget it. Let me just live today for you. Show me what to do. And the potency of your spells... Oh, God, please bless this, this uh, business venture. Lord Jesus, I'm going to start up this business. Here, would you please bless it? Yeah, he's going to say, I'm not your Coke machine, mm -hmm. your Dorito machine. No. <laughs> you were secure in your wickedness. You said, no one sees me. Your wisdom and knowledge led you astray. You said to yourself, I exist, and there is no one else. You thought you were top notch. Sorry. He's still the king. He's still Lord. But disaster will happen to you. You will not know how to avert it. And it will fall on you. You will be unable to ward it off. Devastation will happen to you suddenly and unexpectedly. So take your stand with your spells and your many sorceries. But you have wearied yourself with from your youth. Perhaps you'll be able to succeed. Perhaps you will inspire terror. Verse 14. Look, they are like stubble. Fire, the fire of God, burns them up. They cannot deliver themselves from the power of the flame. Listen, you remember me quoting Matthew 26, 58? Peter was standing there by the fire warming himself. Verse 14b, catch this, guys. This is not a call for warming themselves or fire to sit beside. Folks, jump in the fire. Get in there. Stop playing games. Your words mean something. Your heart means something. Your life is precious. God wants to use you in a powerful way. He wants sacrifice. I'll give it right back. He wants everything. Somebody wants to cuss you, blaspheme you, blaspheme Jesus in your face. You're going to get offended for Jesus? He's got big shoulders. Or are you going to say, I love you so much? They start yelling at you, what are you going to do? Are you going to do this? Hey! Or are you going to do this? Thank you, Lord. Yes, I receive it. And I give it to you. Thank you, Jesus. Let him fling every filth upon you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Reasoning is out the window. Forget it. They insult you without a cause. The scriptures show that. Psalm 22, am I right? They attack me without a cause. I remember a time one of my kids did that to me. Just reason was out the window. Nothing I could say would change his mind. And Leanne and I knew it was going to happen. And every minute.
manner of filth came out of his mouth. And I did this. I raised my hands and I was taken back 2,000 years ago to that whipping post. Every word that came out of multiple children's mouths felt like a whip. I was disconnected. I was in worship. Tears just fell. It hurt. Folks, it doesn't feel good. It hurt. But just as quick as it came, then immediately, next thing I heard, it's like somebody flipped a switch. Oh, God, what am I doing? Oh, Jesus, forgive me. Oh, and just to show you that it was not physical. It was not rational. It was not a mental argument. Because mental arguments is logic. It's an earthly thing. It's a spiritual perspective. It's a spiritual um, language. And that's what happened. As quick as it happened with all the insults and injuries, and Leanne could only just sit back and cry and just watch me take it and get abused. It hurt. It hurt. For my own children, it hurt. But I said, I'm going to take it for my children. Fathers, where are you? Take it for your children. Take it for your children. Please, God, take it for your children. Do it now. Apologize and let them spew everything upon you. Children, do it for your parents because they don't have Jesus in front of them. Parents, do it. Children, do it for them. Say, Daddy, I'm so sorry. And let them get angry and say, and, and, and it doesn't make sense. But let them. Because you're the only representative of Jesus Christ to them. We do not have enough people who will not only speak the truth, but live the truth. That's what it takes. That's love. Forgive me, that's not, I'm sharing a personal testimony because I don't know of any others at this point. Or Jim Elliott, Nate Saint, those guys there in Ecuador that said, we love you, we are your friends. And they all got speared and gave their lives. And now that whole tribe, well, most of the tribe, I'd say, are Christians because they gave their lives. They did it in a real way. Folks, not just in a physical way. It starts in the heart. It starts in the home. It starts with your families. When, you're, when your husband is throwing a beer bottle and is getting angry, say, I love you, honey. Can I get you another beer? I know that's controversial, isn't it? But you know what? You listen to the Spirit. You tell him what you... You listen to what he tells you. He may say, just pick up the bottle and say, honey, I love you. Can I get you something? Love will conquer that fear. Don't be afraid. God has not given a spirit of fear, but a power of love and self-control. Folks, are you in the fire or are you just standing there warming yourself by it? Because there will be people who rise up Say, I'm going in that fire. And there will be those who say, oh, I just want to watch. I'll wait till it's over. Yeah, and watch what God's going to do. Yeah, I'll wait till it's over with you. He says, I'm waiting for you to obey. God forbid we be one of the ones who say, Lord, Lord, open up. I don't know you. You didn't know me. And Peter didn't know him. He didn't. He did afterwards. Praise God for his grace, which is boundless and free. Folks, these are warnings. These are serious warnings. Please, don't neglect them. Don't hold them for yourselves. Please, tell people. This is serious. Folks, if, if somebody here is not right with God, please, we want to pray with you. We want to lift you up. If you've been living a mediocre, lackluster life, I understand there's awesome worship. We had excellent, uh, the worship was amazing. The Holy Spirit just moved in our hearts. Now it's time to live it. Now it's time to get out there and do what He says and live it. Do the difficult things. And if you've not been doing the difficult things in your little day-to-day -day life, please turn. That's the call to repentance. 
That's the call of the cross. You will not experience the fullness of the Holy Spirit, the treasures of His right hand. At your right hand, there, there are precious pleasures and treasures forevermore. If you've not experienced that, it's because you haven't walked that road. And you haven't suffered for Him. It's one thing to suffer. It's another thing to suffer for Him. Paris Reedhead was ministering to some Africans. He did the sermon. He's with Jesus now. Ten shekels in a shirt. He says this. He tried to save these monsters of iniquity over in Africa. Don't remember where. Liberia, I think, maybe. And God told him, and, and he was getting ready to just pack up and leave. God said, and, and he told the Lord, you sent me here to preach to them and they don't care. And God stopped him. He said, I didn't send you there for them. I sent you there for me. Changed everything. And then he just did what he was told. And as a result, more and more people came to Christ. Hudson Taylor, the same thing. Stop doing your own thing. Live and fail into his arms. Get in the fire. And constructionists say, if you're not messing up, you're not doing anything. Get out there. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your word, for your call to repentance. Jesus, thank you for the fire. Thank you that you are good. Thank you for your love and your mercy that endures forever. Father, bless these people now. Let them take this message of fire and preach the gospel to all creation that we may be strengthened with compassion for the lost, knowing that the lost need the resurrection. But the believers need to experience the loss. In Jesus' name, amen. One last ever did soul winning Tuesday night. She went one time, I think, scared the death out of her. When she was uh, in her teens, she said this, I never did it because I was always afraid when I go out and she grew up in a Christian Missionary Alliance Baptist leaning church that said, uh, if you believe in Jesus and trying to get people saved, she was always afraid that somebody was going to ask them, ask her, what has it done for you? So she never did it because she believed. She never believed. Knowledge comes by doing, not by head. Knowledge, the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil is what got us in trouble. In the Hebrew, to know, just like Adam knew his wife, is the word yada. In that parent root, it's a root system, the word yad is in there. Yad means hand. You know intimately by your experiences and your head knowledge supplements. And when she had a moment in her 20s where she committed one of the top 10. She recognized and saw herself as a sinner. Coming out of a Christian home as a sinner needed Jesus. And it drove her to the cross. And she said, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. And she could say over the years, I, kn I know my Redeemer lives. I've got something to tell. I have something to tell. I can tell you what he's done for me. Day after day after day after day, I can tell you what he's done for me. I'm not afraid now. And she can tell you, I'm not afraid to share. If somebody says, what has he done for you? Oh, how much time do you have? And she'll tell you. Day in, day out. Because she suffered loss. She sacrificed. And that's what it's all about. The cardinal ethic of a saint to sacrifice not success. In Jesus' name, amen.